Section 4.3, Logarithmic Functions, Part 2 of the Notes. In this part of the notes, we're going to focus on logarithmic graphs. First of all, let's define a logarithmic function with base a. a has to be greater than 0, it can't be 1, and x has to also be greater than 0. Like we said earlier in this section, log functions are just inverses of exponential functions of the same base. So here I have the red exponential function y equals 2 to the x, so that's base 2. I have, I have that graphed, and in blue I have y equals log base 2 of x. So we see that they're inverses because they reflect across the line y equals x. Let's look at our parent function for a log function, f of x equals log base a of x. So first of all, we see that our domain is from 0 to infinity, and our range is from negative infinity to infinity. We have a table of values over here, but there's really three main points that I want you to look at. Looking on the graph, we have the point 1 over a comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and a comma 1. So that's what we're really going to use to graph these with, so make sure you have those written down in your notes. The example graphed here is a log function where a is bigger than 1. So our graph is increasing, it's going up. Our y-axis is our vertical asymptote. And like I said earlier, our graph passes through those three points. Again, those are going to be really important to have written down. Now we have an example where a is between 0 and 1. So maybe this is like log base 1 half of x. Our domain is 0 to infinity, and our range is negative infinity to infinity. And we are decreasing this time on our entire domain. The y-axis is still our vertical asymptote. And we still have those exact same three points that we need to focus on for graphing. Here's a quick summary of the characteristics that we just talked about. First of all, all of our log functions are going to go through these three points. Later on, we'll see some transformations in our log functions, and we're just going to take those points and transform them as necessary. Number two, if a is greater than 1, then our function is going to be increasing, so going up to the right, and if a is between 0 and 1, then we're going to be decreasing, so going down to the right. The y-axis is our vertical asymptote, unless we have a transformation that's moved it, and our domain is 0 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. In order to graph our log functions, we're going to find these three points and then apply any transformations that may have occurred in the equation. Make a quick note to yourself that a is just the base of the log. Also make a note reminding yourself about transformations. If we have a number inside the parentheses with, with x, where the h is, then that goes left, right, a plus is left, and a minus is right. And then if we have a number outside where k is, then that's up, down. Plus is up, and minus is down. Example 3, part a, we're going to graph f of x equals log base 1 half of x. So first of all, we need to identify those three points. Notice first that our a is 1 half. So for the first point, I'm going to take 1 divided by 1 half. I'm going to get out 2. So we get the point 2 comma negative 1. The next point is just 1 comma 0. And the next is 1 half comma 1. Now we need to go and look and see if we have any transformations going on. If I look at my equation, I don't have an h or a k value, so no h and k means no transformations. When I plot those three points, this is the graph that I get. Remember we have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, so don't cross the y-axis. And since our base was 1 half, which is between 0 and 1, we are decreasing. Part B, 
we're graphing f of x equals log base 3 of x. I want you to pause your video and try this one on your own. So we find the three points 1 3rd comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and 3 comma 1. Again, we didn't have an h and k value, so no transformations. So those three points give us our graph. Example 4, part a, we're going to graph f of x equals log base 2 of x minus 1. First of all, we need to notice that that minus 1 is an h value, so we're moving left or right. Next, let's find our three points using base 2 for a. And now, since we do have that minus 1, we notice that we're moving everything to the right 1. So if we go left and right, that's going to change our x coordinate. So in those blue points right there, I'm going to need to add 1 to each of my x coordinates because I'm moving right 1. So if I add 1 to the first x coordinate, I get 3 halves. Second one will be 2. The third one, I'm going to get 3. So again, the only thing I've changed with those points is I've added 1 to each x value because my transformation was right 1. I didn't bother the y's because I didn't have a k value. My vertical asymptote also needs to move right 1. So instead of being the y-axis, it's going to be at x equals 1. Now I can graph my three points and draw my vertical asymptote. Notice that my graph is increasing, and that is because my base was bigger than 1. Example 4, part b, we're going to graph f of x equals log base 3 of x minus 1. I'm going to have you try this one on your own, but first of all, let's talk about whether that minus 1 is an h or a k value. h values will always be inside of parentheses with the x. So since this minus 1 is not in parentheses, then it's actually going to be a k value, so it's telling us that we're going to go down 1. So now I want you to pause your video and try this problem on your own, and then restart it to see my answer. Okay, so first of all, we're going to find our three points by plugging 3 in for a. And then since we have a k value of minus 1, we're going to be moving everything down 1. This is going to be done by subtracting 1 from each of our y values. Since we're moving down, it's going to be a y value change. So subtract 1 from the first value, y value, and the second, and the third. Notice that I didn't change my x's at all because I didn't have an h value moving left or right. So here's what our graph is going to look like. We've moved it down 1, so my vertical asymptote didn't change at all. It's still just the y-axis. Your vertical asymptote will only change when you move left or right. And I remember now, I've forgotten the last example to do the domain and range. For this example, it's just going to be 0 to infinity for the domain, because we didn't move left or right. And my range is negative infinity to infinity. The last example that we did, part A, since we moved everything to the right one, our domain actually ended up being from 1 to infinity. So make sure you go back and make a note of that. Example 4, again we're going to graph the log function, this time f of x equals log base 4 of x plus 2 plus 1. So now I see we have an h and a k value going on, so we will need to both move our graph left or right and up or down. Let's start by finding those first three points with the a value of 4. Next, we need to apply our transformations. The h of a plus 2 means that we're going to go left 2, so we're going to be subtracting 2 from all of our x values. And the plus 1 for k means we're going to move up 1, which means we're going to add 1 to all of our y values. So I'm going to start and subtract 2 from each of my x values.
So there's my new x values. And now I'm going to go in and add 1 to each of my y values. Now I can plot my points. Now that I've plotted those three points, I'm going to think about where my vertical asymptote is. My vertical asymptote only changes if I have an h value, if I've moved left or right. So for this problem, my vertical asymptote is now x equals negative 2 because we moved everything to the left 2. So I'm going to draw that on here. And I should expect my graph to be increasing since my base is 4. It's bigger than 1, so my graph should be increasing. My domain and range, um, only the domain is different. So my domain is now going to be from negative 2 to infinity, because I moved everything to the left 2. And my range is still negative infinity to infinity.